How's it going guys, Angus here from Makers Muse and these are Easter egg caches. So the idea is you hide them around the garden for the kids to find and inside they open them up and they're full of delicious chocolate. And I like the idea of these because they protect the chocolate a little bit more than just the thin foil wood from like ants and rain and a little bit of temperature protection. And they just look fantastic as well because I've used a new feature in the new idea maker to add a texture to these because originally they were just boring, plain, unscrewable eggs. But with this new feature, you can add any texture you like really quickly. So I'll show you in this video how I made this whole range of different textured eggs using the same file and template in Idea Maker. So let's jump straight into it. All right, so start off by downloading the latest Idea Maker from the Raise 3 d website. So Idea Maker is free, which is pretty incredible. It's made by Raise 3 d who produce 3D printers. And I think the idea is a bit of promotion for them, gets a name talked about but it really is incredible for the fact that it's free software and it is so powerful now. So it's worth checking out even if you're not interested in the texture sort of thing, but what you wanna do is download the latest beta, which is 4.1.0. Um, and then that's the time of filming in future, I'm sure it'll be updated and improved. Once you've downloaded and installed Idea Maker, head over to ideamaker.io. Now I don't know why you can't download Idea Maker from this site, but this is like race 3 ds community for the software and the platform. And if you just set up Idea Maker, you'll need to have a profile suitable for your 3D printer, unless you have a raised 3D printer that's sort of built in. Uh, but I use the Ender 3, so you just basically search like Ender 3, like this. And uh, there's heaps of profiles the community's made already. There's even like a profile generator, which is really cool. So find one you like, and then it's really easy to import into Idea Maker. Just have Idea Maker open on your computer, and then you go import to Idea Maker, and then click copy. If you head over to Idea Maker, you'll see it's already notified it that it wants to download a profile. You download it, and then it will now install it and add it to your profile list and your slicing settings. But we're here to check out the texture feature. So I'm just gonna grab a cube to drag in and show you how it works and what it does. But it's worth noting that they didn't invent this kind of thing. You can do this in Blender natively and actually export geometry with that texture from an image. But in Idea Maker, you use an image to create texture on the surface of the model, but it's purely used for the generation of G-code. You can't add texture using the images and then export the STL with that new texture in the 3D geometry. It won't let you do that. It's literally just for within the software to then make the 3D print. So that's worth noting if that's something you wanted to do. Sorry, at least right now you can't do that. So click texture with the model selected, then surface you want to drop down to custom texture. Now you have a few ways you can import a texture. You can actually grab it from a local disc. You can grab pretty much any image. Uh, then you can also import from the Idea Maker library and they have a few good demo ones to check out. And you can also export a texture if you're happy with it to use in, uh, in uh, future projects. So if you select import from Idea Maker library, they have a few good ones already and I'm sure they're gonna add to them in the future. One of my favorites is this Celtic gold. It looks really, really cool. Uh, so you just click import to Idea Maker like the profile, copy and then go back and it's all ready to go. Click download, it's gonna download and then apply it to our model. And there you go, that's the image wrapped around our cube. And there's different mapping types depending on the geometry and what you want it to look like. So for example, with the cube, a cube wrapping would make more sense. It's gonna put the image and project it from all six sides. However, it's worth noting that the geometry will not do anything to the top and bottom surfaces. It's literally only the sides in terms of where the layers build up. It will not do anything to the top. And I'll show you that now. So I'm just gonna leave it at cube for this and then close that. I'm gonna start slicing using my, um, my profile already downloaded. And that's the result we get. So that's the Celtic sort of pattern that's been projected on all the sides, but not the top or bottom surfaces. It will not do anything to those surfaces. It only works on the, um, the layers as it builds up. So not the top or bottom fills. But yeah, it looks pretty good. And you can do this with almost any image. So I had the idea of getting my old Easter egg design from 2015, 16, it's, it's a long time ago, and then adding a bit of freshness to it by adding some cool textures to it. And I actually ended up making a template in Idea Maker, so you can easily grab textures, dump them in, make a fresh new look egg, and then easily 3D print it. So let me show you how I did that. So here we have the two parts of the Easter egg cache. So it's got a screw thread detail, and the top screws into the bottom, and you can hide whatever you like, and then hide it around the garden, or use it for a little decorative object. It's a really fun print, doesn't take too long to print, but yeah, originally fairly boring, nothing really on the surface that's of interest. But using the textures, 
we can add detail back in to make them very interesting and complex while still serving a function. And I found for this object, the best mapping type is cylindrical. And I played around with different types. For example, if you did uh, cube, you can easily see where those edges meet up because there's no hard edges to define those projections. And I found spherical just stretched the image too much and didn't really look as good as I wanted. So I went with cylindrical. So what you end up with is this sort of point where everything converges and then it wraps around the objects and then will converge at the bottom. But again, you don't see that on the, um, on the actual print. So it actually looks really good and works very well for an eggy sort of shape. It'd work very well for a, a vase as well. Anything sort of round with rounded edges where the top doesn't matter too much, uh, then I think cylindrical is probably the best projection type for those those objects. Something I've noticed that it may be a bug or a uh, something that's changed in future is the orientation of the texture that's projected onto the model is dependent on the orientation the model is actually brought in initially. So for example, the egg, because I designed it years ago in CAD software that didn't have the uh, XYZ coordinates set up for 3D printing, it's, it's brought in like this, sideways. Uh, whereas ideally you want it to be brought in um, like this, ready to be stuck on the print bed. So you need to rotate it to make it sit on the print bed. So for example, I would select rotate, rotate it around so it will sit on the print bed and then arrange uh, accordingly. However, once we start going to add texture and we select those objects, you'll notice something kind of strange. This is exactly the same texture and they're oriented exactly the same, but the projection is different. For the object that was oriented correctly straight away and I didn't have to rotate it, it looks quite good uh, with the cylindrical uh, pattern. But with the one that was sideways, it's not. It's tried to do the pattern when it was at its original import orientation on its side. For as far as I can tell, you can't change any of this. You can move the pattern around. Yes, you can move it, you know, up or down um, and sideways to sort of change its orientation and also its scaling. And you can rotate it, but you can see it's rotating the pattern around that projection point rather than changing the projection point. So the only workaround I can suggest at this time is to orient the object when you bring it in and then you export it as an STL separately and it'll export it as an oriented STL, then bring it back in and the projection and mapping should work how you want it to. However, some of you are probably noticing an issue we're gonna come into. So if I just slice this and we check the preview out, you'll see exactly what I mean. That's right, it's added texture everywhere. So not only do we have texture on the surfaces we want it, but we have texture on the screw threads, which will not work because the texture adds uh, thickness to the object. It doesn't cut into the object, it adds thickness to make that texture detail. So it's going to completely ruin the threads. But not only that, it's actually added texture inside the object too. You can see on both objects, there's texture inside them. And look, sometimes you might want that, but we don't want that here. There is no way this is going to screw together. And we don't want texture on the inside because A, no one sees it and B, it ruins the geometry. So let's go back and let's fix that. And there's two different ways you can do that in Idea Maker. And it depends what slicing software you're familiar with. If you're familiar with something like Simplify 3D, there's the per layer settings you can manipulate and also the per object settings. So you can change things in there. If you're more familiar with something like Cura or, um, or Prusa Slicer, then there is the modifiers approach to changing where areas are affected by texture. I would say well, the modifiers approach is more user friendly, but not as precise. It's a little bit more powerful though, in terms of what it can affect, but I'm also more used to the per layer settings because I used to use Simplify 3D for quite a while. Either way works, I'll walk you through both of them. Let's start with the per layer settings. First things first, we don't want texture inside either of the models. So I'm gonna go into my profile here and under the texture dropdown, there's a few settings you can change and I want to tick texture outside only. And that means there won't be texture on the inside of the egg at all, which is exactly what we want. But before we go forwards, we have to start changing our group and layer settings. So you see I've got these two halves, base and top, and I'm going to make a separate group for the uh, base like that. Okay, so now we've got two different settings groups and we can change separate settings within these and they'll only affect one part or the other. So I only want to affect the base because the top has the thread inside, now we've turned texture off inside, it's not gonna to touch it. But with the top part, when it gets up to that thread, I want the texture to stop and the threads to be left alone. So with that settings group selected, we can go to a per layer setting and we can start making some. So uh, we wanna start with the texture, obviously, so I'm not gonna change anything with the setting one. 
Then we'll have a setting two, where at the set a certain height, we'll turn the texture off and disable it. So I need to find out the height of where the thread starts and uh, you can measure the model on that. I actually already know where it is, it's 28. So I'm gonna just enter zero to 28, nothing changes. And then from 28 millimeters to whenever, like 100 um, beyond the end of the model, I'm going to change settings. So to change settings for the second part of the height modifier, I'm going to click the pen tool, add settings, search so for texture, and I'm gonna make sure it shows the texture settings to manipulate. And then you go into that setting and then you want to make sure that it is disabled. So it's gonna override the default slicer settings and then disable the texture beyond that height. Like I said, a bit more tedious, but a bit more precise than the modify method we're gonna do next. Slice, yes, override, absolutely. Um, yes, sure, thin walls, whatever. Perfect, okay, so this is exactly what we want. So if I go down the layers, you can see that as it builds up, there's nothing inside, and then we get to this part on the bottom half of the egg, and the texture stops, and we get a nice clean thread with no texture. But the uh, top half of the egg is unaffected. Really powerful stuff, guys. Um, you could do so many things with so many different parts in the same print, and have different settings at different points for different objects. Really, the sky's the limit. It's really powerful. Very, very cool. But let's try the next method, which is a lot quicker and easier, and that is to use modifiers. All right, so again, this is what it looks like if we don't change anything except disabling texture on the inside of the model. Uh, again, the threads will not work. So with modifiers, what you do is you take 3D geometry, and its purpose is to affect settings that it encompasses where it intersects with other 3D geometry. It's not printed in any way. It's literally there just to change settings in that area. So what we want to do is use 3D geometry and a modifier to actually cover this thread section and say no texture here. And you can do it really simply by just going up here to modifier and then I'm going to select the, uh, the bottom half and then add modifier and I want a box. Very simple, and you can literally just enter in the size of the box. So I'm gonna make it, let's just say, you can make it bigger, it doesn't matter because it's per object, so it's not gonna affect the top half. So let's do that, 100, 100, and maybe 50, sure. So it's quite large, but that's totally fine, because we can just go and move it into position. And because I want the height to be precise, instead of just dragging it arbitrarily, I'm just gonna enter, again, 28 like that, and it's gonna be perfectly where the thread starts like that. Okay, now, what do we want this modifier to do? Well, if you go under type, there's all these different settings you can change, but we want to select no texture at overlap with a parent model, which is very self-explanatory. Here at the threads, where it's overlapping, not gonna do textures. And what we end up with is exactly the same result as before, just a different way to do it. It's uh, actually a lot simpler to use modifiers, but as I said, maybe just a little less control. But really, that was very easy, and I use both options interchangeably, depending on what I'm trying to do. But this print's really good on the end of three. The settings could maybe use a little bit more tweaking, but overall, I'm very, very happy with the results. I'll have a link below in the description to these idea files, but let me show you my results. So this is what I've come up with in my testing. Again, this is all the same file. I've just added a different texture and I've printed it in different filaments in my Ender 3. And I've used some of the, the provided textures on the ideamaker.io website, as well as some custom ones I've come up with myself. And a lot of these eggs are printed in, you can guess, Polyalchemy Elixir filament, which has this gorgeous, gorgeous sheen to it that just looks so good for a sort of festive object. So I'll start with my favorite one by far, is the Celtic Cross one. Um, this one was a, a, a texture provided by Idea Maker, and it just looks stunning. It's got just the right amount of detail to really look fantastic. It unscrews, and then like inside, you've got the eggs there. Absolutely lovely, I love this one so much. And then you've got something that's completely like the opposite. You've got like traditional, and then you've got this weird dog bone texture with like a space age cyan metallic look. And it's like something from like an alien spaceship or something. Really, really cool again. And just shows how much difference you can get by just changing the textures on the, the same uh, STL model. I tried making one that looks more like a traditional egg. Uh, and that's what I've got here. It's this texture with uh, lots of little sort of cracks and tiles around it. This one didn't print as well as I would have liked. I've been playing around with the retraction settings and that in the profile I downloaded into Idea Maker. And um, I think accidentally in one of these, I had 20 millimeters of retraction 
um, on a direct drive hot end because I meant to put two and there was a, a zero after it. Whoops. Anyway, it didn't jam, but um, there's a few areas of under extrusion. And I think this filament was very moist. Uh, so it's a bit tight to unscrew, uh, but it does look more like a natural egg. And again, you can see how quickly you can add that sort of natural texture to a STL file versus trying to do it by hand. I wouldn't know where to start. I am not an organic 3D modeler. This is a really cool trick for just adding that a little bit of uh, natural texture to an otherwise very geometric object. These two have some custom images I created. Uh, I started initially with just a grid. Uh, I was really interested to see how the grid would distort and project onto the actual egg object. And it looks almost like sort of like some sort of grenade or something. So I printed it in that metallic green there. And I really do like how the grid ends. I'd left it without a border and it sort of stopped there. So it's got an interesting look to it. But this new feature can be used for more utilitarian purposes. Uh, instead of just adding interesting decorative textures to the eggs, um, I did this one, which has my logo on it. And again, this was just an image with the logo and I used, uh, I reused the symbols I used in the expanding lockbox mechanism. I had some sort of interesting manipulations of the Makers Muse logo on each face. I just got those, uh, tiled them and patterned them a little bit and then brought them into Idea Maker and made this purple egg in the Polyalchemy Elixir, Nightshade Purple. Uh, to have my logo and it's interesting because like it's, it's not too distorted But then you go to the other side and it's uh, reversed So just the mapping method means that one side's facing the right way the other side's reversed um, You can again play with like the spherical mapping projection method which uh, might work better for putting a logo on something or even maybe uh, Using the cube if it's if it's an object with hard faces you just want to put it on and then you could probably mask out areas with the modifiers if you wanted to. But yeah, this looks really, really good. Again, still playing around with attractions, so where the seams are, especially on this shiny filament, very obvious, but overall very, very happy with how these work. And the, very happy with the fact the screw thread just works so well. I'm happy to have been able to refresh this model using a really cool feature that wouldn't have been even imaginable back then. And I just couldn't help myself for the video. I designed this little egg holder for the wobbly wheel robot platform. It's a bit of a laser cut perspex with some standoffs and it lets this thing drive around with those eggs on top. Just a little bit of fun, but it actually <laughs> works really, really well. I almost wish there was like a way to eject the eggs so I could drive around and just fire them off into the undergrowth for people to find, that'd be really fun. But I did design this platform to be modular and able to be modified. So that's exactly what I did here. And I'm really happy that it worked as well as it did. And if you want to print these eggs, again, there is a link below to the idea maker file, the STL file, and all of my ESO files are always free. I give back to the community. And if you want to print something challenging, I've got my previous models, for example, the uh, the Easter egg torture test. That's a little bit more challenging. Or for example, you might want to try this, which is a sliding puzzle in the shape of an egg. And the whole idea is you scramble it, scramble the egg, and then you have to figure out how it all goes back together. So thanks for watching guys. Hope you found this video interesting here on Makers Muse. And I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later guys. Bye.